Hey, what is going on, Succession fans? I am excited to talk about the series finale of Succession, Season 4, Episode 10, with open eyes. If you have not watched that episode, get out of here. Um, so I've got points I want to make on each of the kids, uh, talk about the kids as a whole, and then I want to talk about three things that I think the show Succession is about, um, and that's pretty much it. So let's just jump into it. Uh, first things first, Tom, our new CEO, our new leader, uh, running ATM, and he's going to be Matson's Patsy. If you were looking for a big surprise in the finale, some kind of twist, something unexpected to happen, this is obviously a disappointment for you. Um, I know a lot of people had guessed and thought that this was a realistic scenario for um, multiple episodes now, and it came to fruition. It is, though, a realistic choice that the show could have made that would have happened in this universe. Tom is the quintessential corporate guy who's going to do as he is told. He will even let Matson talk about sleeping with Shiv, his wife, if it means that he gets to be CEO. He has no core. He has no values. He has nothing that he believes in. He just wants the role of CEO, and he's the perfect lapdog for what Matson wants. Um, someone else brought up the point, which is, you know, I'm not even sure Tom's a big winner here. He's he's literally just going to be a punching bag for the media to attack uh, ATN um, if anything goes wrong with what's going on with the lawsuits, with the election. Uh, Tom's going to have to take that pain, be a sponge for pain, as, as he said in the episode. Um, and then also, we have to remember, like, Matson can fire Tom at any point in time. He could fire Tom tomorrow. Um, Tom has no claim to sticking around. Shiv, Shiv's vote, Shiv's voice means absolutely nothing to Matson at this point, um, unless Shiv, uh, unless Matson, you know, wants to sleep with Shiv. Um, so, I. Yeah, I hesitate to say Tom's a big winner, but he is the CEO of ATN, um, and so he will get the crown at least for now. Uh, going on to Kendall, um, I want to point out uh, or start out with Jeremy Strong's acting here. Jeremy Strong, if you've paid attention to any of the news, kind of the behind the scenes stuff, he got a lot of criticism for his method acting, where he would be in character, even offset. Uh, he would be in character constantly, um, and it bothered uh, some of his other actors, including uh, the guy who played Logan, uh, Brian. Brian Cox. Brian Cox kind of insulted him uh, off, you know, not on screen, um, not even on the set, but in interviews. Brian Cox was really harsh on Jeremy Strong's method acting, saying it was complete BS. Um, and I watched, I watched this entire series. I watched Jeremy Strong act as Kendall. Um, I thought he was the best actor in the entire series, including Brian Cox, um, including the amazing uh, uh, Kieran. Uh, I forget his last name. Kieran Corkin, uh, who played Roman. Um, I thought, I thought Jeremy Strong was just at a next level, and and those other two gentlemen were amazing actors. Uh, but so for all the criticism that Jeremy Strong's uh, method acting got, uh, it worked. It worked phenomenally. He was absolutely sensational. So I think, honestly, those other people that don't like his method acting, they just need to let the results for you speak for themselves. And if they don't like to act that way, they don't have to. Uh, but it's obviously working for Jeremy because he performed amazingly. Uh, in terms of Kendall and Kendall Roy, he got so close to his ultimate goal. Um, but ultimately, it was the sibling rivalry uh, mixed with you know jealousy as well as his own mistakes in the past and his own anger and his own demons inside of him uh, that were ultimately his demise. As, as Jesse Strong said in the afterward of the show, you know, this is a tragedy. Um, and so none of them uh, were really up for this job of CEO. But if one of them had to do it, if one of them, you know, could make their best case to being CEO, I think Kendall would have been it. I think in this episode, he did make a great case to Roman and Shiv why they could not be the perfect choice. But of course, Shiv had her own idea at the end of this episode. Uh, and so Shiv, I think in the last three to four episodes, she's really, really, really fallen off the cliff in terms of how much I like her character. Um, as we've seen, the, again, those last three to four episodes, she's been outsmarted, she's been outmaneuvered, and the only real victory, quote unquote, that she got was not allowing Kendall to become the CEO. Um, but that was driven, in all likelihood, by jeal uh, jealousy and pettiness. She ended up becoming her mother, a fate that she has tried to avoid this entire show. And in some ways, while Kendall's ending is tragic, and we see him at the end, you know, staring at the water on the bench, um, and, you know, we're hoping he's not going to do anything dangerous to himself, but obviously he's going to be a shell of himself for a long time after this. Uh, even with 
that tragedy of Kendall's life and what's going to happen to him next, I think Shiv's uh, might be the most tragic scenario. She might have the worst lot of the bunch because she's stuck in this sort of purgatory where she's never going to be happy uh, and she will never also be free. So she's not going to be happy and she's not going to be free. Not because she is forced to be with Tom, um, but she can't unlock herself. She can't unstick herself from this relationship. And she also, in my mind, can't unstick herself from this proximity to power. Um, even though she is going to be the wife of the CEO, of a non-family owned business with an owner who backstabbed her, she still wants to be close to it in some capacity. Uh, so for, for me, her ending's, yeah, probably the most sad. Uh, I think it's very tragic for Shiv and it's very tragic for her fans. I count myself among uh, one of them because uh, I think she's fallen off a lot these last four episodes. Also, there's no way in my mind that Shiv cared at all that Kendall killed uh, the waiter from season one. She's known that for a while uh, and it only came up in the very last minute um, when she had plenty of time to, to bring this up as a point, but it only came up in the last minute because she was simply jealous of what, about what Kendall was going to achieve, um, which in my mind makes using that death as an excuse uh, even more sickening, honestly, to, to, to bring that up just because you're jealous of your brother because you know they go in uh, Logan's conference room or Logan's office and they see Kendall sitting down there and, and she gets this look on her face like, oh, look at you. You think you're hot shit, don't you? And you could just see how aggravated Shiv was by then. Um, and by the way, I don't know. Um, I've been thinking about this. Let me know in the comments down below. When do you think Shiv changed her mind? Um, was it when she looked at uh, Kendall in Logan's office? Uh, was it some other time? Was it when uh, Kendall was making that really poor presentation about this is a bad deal, just vote no, uh, and, and he just you know kind of skipped over it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but something to think about there. Going on to Roman, I thought Kendall summed it up best when he said that Roman really deep down bottom of his heart of his heart did not want to be CEO, but he's simply not capable of saying it out loud. He cannot admit it to himself, which leads us to a really odd and heartbreaking and weird scene where Kendall hugs Roman so hard that his stitches open up so that Roman has an excuse as to why he cannot be CEO because he has these stitches that are broken open. He's got blood going down his head. And so he's not going to look as good in front of the cameras. I thought that I got to watch that scene again. I've only seen it once. I only saw the episode once. So I've got to see that again. Um, but what an interesting scene uh, that that was. And I think Kendall hit the nail on the head. Ro this was not the life Roman ever wanted. We know that we knew that in season one. Um, I don't know if it was, you know, childhood trauma from his dad that made him want to do this to seek out his dad's approval. Um, that's obviously, you know, a top choice. Uh, maybe it was something else inside of him that made him uh, chase this over the last couple of years. But I think deep down, Kendall's right. Uh, Roman uh, does not want this lifestyle. Um, at the end, uh, I did hear a couple people say that they thought it was heartbreaking watching Roman at the bar with, um, I believe, his martini, uh, which I, I've been told, and I, I can't confirm this, um, the martini was the drink that Jerry has. Someone let me know if that's true or not uh, down below. But someone said that they thought that Roman was really sad and melancholy in that scene. But honestly, when I looked at it, that last shot of Roman, I thought it was a sigh of relief. Um, I think he's finally going to be able to get away from his family, at least for a while, and he's going to enjoy a shot at a normal life with a ton of money and no responsibilities whatsoever. Um, so I, I, I think, yeah, I think Roman's going to end up the best out of the three, if I had to guess. In terms of the kids as a whole, I think there was an obvious and intentional, I want to point that out, intentional lack of character development over the last four seasons. And I say it's intentional uh, because as we'll get to in a, sec in a second, one of the points of the show in my mind was that um, how traumatized and messed up uh, kids can be in a family and how hard it is to untangle that terribly complex web. Um, but I have to be honest, when I compare the lack of character development to other shows that I really love, like Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and The Wire, there was ample 
character development in those shows uh, throughout from the main characters. Yet on the other end, and I'm going to argue against myself here, uh, other shows that I've loved like The Shield and Vic Mackey and Sopranos, uh, uh, Tony Soprano, those main characters honestly do not evolve nearly as much as the world around them evolves. And so I'm torn on this, but for some reason, deep down to me, I wish that there was some more ample character development from either Shiv, Roman, or Kendall, some kind of realization um, uh, to who they are and what they are. Um, but I, I, that wasn't the point of the show, and I do get that. And then as I'm saying this out loud, I'm thinking of that one last uh, scene that was a little on the nose from Roman, where he's basically talking to the audience at that point, which uh, when he's, he's really talking to Kendall, but he's really talking to us. And he says, um, we're BS. All of us are BS. Uh, you know it and I know it. We're not supposed to be up here. And I'm, I'm mangling that quote, uh, but you know what I'm talking about when Shiv had already left the room and, and, and Roman just says to Kendall, we don't deserve any of this. Like, let's stop the facade. Um, we have known that since season one. So I'm, I'm curious as to when Ke uh, Roman came to that um, conclusion and if that is in keeping with his character. If so, that would probably be the the biggest um, realization that any of these three main characters had throughout the show. Um, but I'm not sold uh, that that was true to Roman's true character. Okay, so that's the short synopsis I've got on the three kids. I might come back later this week and talk about uh, everyone else and all of the other key players. But I wanted to wrap up this video with uh, the question that I asked last week was, what is succession really about? And I've been thinking about it the last week, and I've got three things here. Let me know down below what you disagree with or what you want to add on to it. But number one, what is succession about? I think it's in extremely difficult to get out of toxic family dynamics. Uh, Logan was abused and traumatized by his parents. Um, even if he would never admit it, we learn it from uh, Ewing in the last episode um, at the church, at the funeral. Logan then treated his kids horribly, and now his kids treat each other and other people horribly as well. It's a sick, sad dynamic uh, that is almost impossible to escape. We see it all throughout American society. Uh, I am positive you have experiences of this in your own life, in your friends' lives, um, as I do as well. So I think that's um, that might be the number one thing that Jesse was trying to get across. I've got to watch uh, some more of his interviews, but um, I thought that was uh, very well told, that story. The second thing that I think the show is trying to get across, and this isn't in any particular order, but the second thing is uh, the proliferation of empty suits in corporate America. Now, Jesse Armstrong, in an interview, talked about how he knew people who reminded him of Tom, who were tall, they were attractive, but they didn't have a lot going on IQ-wise, or excuse me, uh, they, they were fairly smart, but they didn't have a lot going on in terms of core principles, in terms of their core being. They're simply there to execute without really considering the implications of what they're doing and what's going on. Uh, they are, um, you know, like, well, I can't say this on YouTube, but you remember Shiv's quote to Matson about, you know, Tom's going to perform oral sex on, you know, someone in the room. Um, they're basically there uh, to put themselves out and, and, and to work for that paycheck and to do whatever needs to be done, but they don't really care deep down about what's going to happen. Um, and I think I, I, I think that's a key point. I also think we see this going on again in American society today. If you think about um, so many companies that get in the news today, they accidentally get themselves involved in these uh, culture wars. If you've been paying in any attention to the news. You know, there's culture wars with Disney, Target, Bud Light. There's going to be plenty more to come. I don't care, you know, which way you fall on it. Um, but one of the main problems I think these companies face is that they just take a guess, they run an ad, you know, they're trying to be that empty suit, just trying to implement, make money. Um, and then they run into a case where they, uh, you know, people in America feel like they shouldn't have done something. They get backlash. And then this is the point where the empty suits become a problem because they don't know what to, to do in, in the face of this backlash. Do they double down and say, hey, no, we did nothing wrong? Or do they say, hey, you know what? After thinking about it, we messed up. Do they apologize and take back whatever they've done? Um, and in the case, at least in my mind, of so many of these companies in the culture wars, 
They have empty suits making these decisions. So if they don't have the core guts, they don't have the backbone, they don't have the principle to say, hey, no, we we made the right decision originally. We're going to stand by it. And they also don't have the guts uh, to say, you know what, that was a mistake. Uh, we're not going to do that again, or we're going to do something differently. And so they're stuck in this middle, this gray uh, middle portion uh, of the suit where they're not making any decisions. They're not making anyone happy and their company names stay in the headlines far longer than they need to because they have no backbone. They have no spine. They're not willing to say what they actually believe or they don't even believe anything. That's Tom. And that's the point I think that Jesse's trying to get across. And I thought that was beautiful. Uh, Might be my favorite point of these three. The third point that I think that uh, Jesse and, and the succession writers were trying to get across is that media companies have a vested interest in the public being either uninformed, misinformed, or only told what they want to hear, which could be a form of misinformation or you know being uninformed. Um, and so this can be Fox News, it can be MSNBC, it could be a newspaper, it could be whatever you want. Um, obviously, there is a big connection to Fox News in this show, and uh, you know a lot of implications that they are talking about Fox News there. But I think this point holds true to all media, regardless of whether it's the left or the right. ATN in succession was primarily or solely focused on profits on increasing shareholder value um, while at the same time delivering the news uh, to the public delivering but delivering (laughs) factual straight to the point news to the public with no opinion in a profitable way in 2023 is a herculean effort i don't even know if it can be done honestly Um, and i'm also not sure that when you see Jesse, who is uh, Jesse Armstrong, creator of Succession, when you see him, who is British, and you think about him looking upon our media, looking upon our political system, I can just imagine him having uh, a really quizzical look on his face, sort of, sort of like you can't, you can't honestly run your society like this, can you? Like this can't honestly be the best that you have to offer. Um, Surely you cannot be serious. That's what I can imagine Jesse saying when he looks at our media and our political landscape and the misaligned incentives. If you're trying to deliver straight factual news with no opinion, in 2023, it's not going to get the views. It's not going to get the money that opinion uh, and hyper-partisan stuff will. And that's just the reality. So if you want higher profits, in all likelihood, you got to go more opinion. But if you want straight news, I don't know how you can be a for-profit uh, enterprise, at least in today's culture. Um, and so that's my third point that I think Jesse was trying to make in the show. All in all, I thought it was a very good finale. Not great. I think uh, the finale did the show justice. I thought it kept with the core points that the show was trying to get across. I'd give this finale a solid 8 out of 10. It did everything we expected us to with superb acting as always, but nothing that happened in this episode blew me away. And so that's why I can't give it a nine or a 10 out of 10. However, I did hear some other TV reviewers say that Succession might be in their Mount Rushmore of prestige TV shows. I would love to hear where you rank Succession um, in the comment section down below, and that will be the very next topic of my next video on Succession. So stay tuned, like, subscribe. Hope you guys have a great day.